Welcome back to Let's Automate It, AI and Automation for Non-Techies. I'm Robin, and this is a quick video to talk through a very simple N8N web scraping flow. Now, there's a lot of talk out there. We have all kinds of tools. We're a big fan of Appify here on this channel. You've got things like uh, Firecrawl. There's a host of AI-powered crawlers, but sometimes to crawl a website, you can use a flow as simple as this one. And I wanted to talk you through it today because we use it a lot in our workflows and we actually call it as a sub workflow. You can see this uh, node here is actually being executed by a parent workflow. So for example, you may have a workflow that part of the workflow is scraping a website and you wanna get the, the content of that website to continue working with it, feed it to an AI. In which case you'd be able to pass off that workflow out of the parent workflow into a sub workflow like this one and be able to scrape the data. Let me walk you through what's happening here. It's really quite straightforward. First node is calling it from the parent workflow. You could replace it with any trigger node you wanted if you just wanted to use this workflow independently of a parent workflow. Next up, we have an HTTP node, and that's simply gonna head over to the URL to the website that you want to scrape, and it's gonna go and get the data. This node over here is called an extract HTML node, and it is going to extract the code from that website and turn it into human readable. And then over here, this one, we have a code node. Now, this one in most cases is not going to be needed. In fact, you can safely go ahead and delete this one because what this code node does is it cleans up the HTML even further. But as N8N is getting better and better, this extract the content HTML node nowadays does such a good job that this in most cases is not needed. But, but I've left it in here so that we can take a look at it. And then at right at the end, we'll write the results. We'll write that content, that text body that we get from the website that we're scraping, we can write it to a set node. And if you're running this as part of a parent workflow, it'll pass this result back into the parent workflow. Let's break this down and open each node and have a closer look. Now to do that, I'm gonna go and grab some sample data. And here's a little trick we can do. I have run this before, so I'm just gonna go into my executions here and I'm going to open up this node and here you can see something we ran earlier. This is the input that was coming from a parent node. I'm in the JSON mode here and if I hover over this, this little icon pops up where I can copy this JSON. So I'm gonna copy that. Then I can head back over to my editor here and now I can open up this input node here, click the pencil icon top right and I can paste in that sample data, the data from something I've run before. So I'm going to save that and now you can see we have pin data and it's passing one item in. Basically, we've mimicked what a parent workflow might do. And in this case, it's passing in some information. So let's look at what's coming in. I'm gonna open up this HTTP node and let's have a look. I'll make this a little bit smaller. Let's have a look at what's coming in. It's going to schema mode and this is what's coming in from the parent workflow, actually coming in from our pin data here. And here we have a link. This is the... Um, this is the URL we want to scrape. And right here you can see I'm using a get method and the URL I'm scraping is just dragged and dropped right in there. So it's grabbing hold of this URL. Now we're doing some couple of fancy things with this little HTTP node to make it appear as if it's actually a browser, to mimic a browser. So some websites when you want to scrape them are not so keen on being scraped and um, they put barriers in the way and one of the things they look for is to check if you're actually a real browser or not and putting in these little features over here I found has helped me mimic this uh, being a browser the HTTP no when it goes and gets the information from this URL if we if we put this data in here user agent and we put this value in accept this value in accept language and put this value in and do some cache controlling. Often this is enough to fool the website we're scraping into thinking it's being visited by a regular browser and it's not an attempted scrape. Now often you don't need to worry about that, but I put this in because it does a good job of mimicking that. So let's go ahead and execute this step. 
And right now it's going over and we're scraping the data. And as you can see, we've got the data coming in here. But if you look closely, it's full of code. If we go into the table mode, you can see doc HTML tags, all kinds of things. So we've got the, the scrape the website successfully, but we have all this extra information that we don't really need. And that's where the HTML extract HTML content comes in. So we're just going to open that up. And the operation here is extract HTML content. That's what we're doing. The source data is going to be JSON in most cases, because that is that we are getting JSON coming out of our previous node. So you want to select JSON. Okay, data property, you can call this anything you want, leave it as data, that makes the most sense. Actually, seeing as we've actually got data coming in here from our previous node, you do what you want to call this data. So I'll correct myself that this must, this must be data. And then the extraction key is body. We want to look at the body in here. I'm not going to drive into detail in, on this. This is for non-techies. Just copy this in here. In most cases, your CSS select is going to be HTML. Don't worry about what's going on here. If you understand this, you already know what I'm talking about. If you don't understand it, essentially what we're doing is just saying, hey, there's data inside of here that we want to get. Use this little, these little keys, these codes here to identify what we want and return it. So just copy those settings. And then here at the bottom, we've got clean up text. And that's just going to remove white spaces and double spaces, things like that to make it more readable. So let's go and execute this step. And we'll see all of a sudden here, we're still in table mode. You can see we no longer have a lot of code in here. We've got some image alt tags in here. Um, but for, for a lot of part, we've got most of the code is missing. But we still do have some code in here. Let's see what happens here now with our, our code node. I'm going to open this up. As I say, it's not necessary. What we've got actually will work already. But maybe you want to extract it further. And I'll just open this up and uh, feel free to pause the video, take a screen grab, go and feed this into your favorite LLM and they'll do a jo good job of duplicating this for you. So there it is, row one to 33. Let me scroll up here to uh, 33 and now we've got the balance here. And this is just going to strip out any additional, fairly conventional, uh, let's call it clutter that you might have on a website, navigation menus, footers, social media links and such like. So let's run that and see if that improves it at all and actually did, did quite a good job. If we look here, the incoming body had a bunch of code and things in it, but our resulting content here actually is a lot cleaner. So in this particular example, this code node did a good job for us, but as I say, you can drop that out if you don't want the added complexity. This is a pretty good job, and if you feed that to an LLM, if you wanna summarize it, it will do just fine. However, you will be burning a couple more tokens, but once we've cleaned it up, we've just isolated that text that we're after a little bit better. So let's go and run this now. And what all we're doing here is writing our results here. There is our scraped website. And if you're rubbing, running this as a sub workflow, it'll pass it back to a parent workflow. I'm just gonna go and save that. And uh, let's have a quick look. I actually wanna show you an example of Here's a complex workflow. I'm not going to worry about this complex work workflow. Where there are, is another video on this workflow. Please don't worry about it. But what I really do want to isolate on this video is the use of this as a sub workflow. So this particular step here is using an RSS feed to get a, a feed, a website. And we're just checking whether it's published in the last 24 hours, if it is a recent article or not. I've connected this up to the false branch because the actual article I'm testing on is old. But And then here, this is the node we're using to exec execute a sub workflow. And this is the sub workflow we've just been looking at. If I click into this, we'll see we are executing the simple site scrape sub workflow. And that is this workflow, simple site scrape sub workflow. It doesn't need to be active, but the sub workflow does not need to be active. Uh, if you are using this as an independent workflow in its own right, you will need to make this active. But here it goes. And if we go and run this, it will, let's actually run this for ourselves right now. It's going, there we go. It's, it's calling the, the workflow. It's gone and scraped the article and there it's brought back the result. So it's called this workflow. It's run through it. It's grabbed the result. There's the result. 
and it's brought it back into the parent workflow as an output of this execute simple site scrape sub workflow node and then we can continue with the workflow of whatever it is we need to do it i hope that it has been useful to you it is a simple little sub workflow to scrape websites and sub workflows are a great way to modulize your workflow so you don't need to keep rebuilding them you can have these snippets of workflows and you can call them when they need it and have simpler parent workflows this leaning on sub workflows to hand off tasks to Hope you enjoyed that. I hope it's useful. We'll see you in the community. Come and join us in there uh, where this workflow will be available for you to download and to enjoy and come and chat with us on the workflow. Good night, good morning, good day, wherever you are in the world. And once and as always, thank you for spending time with me.